Now I have a video that's very, very, very important. And it's about the children. And we all know when you're dealing with children, you're dealing with a very, very sensitive situation. And so, I'm going to say it's almost the most sensitive situation. Because people, they have children, and they raise their children, and their children inherit what they have, and their children uh, live on and pass the legacy down. You see, children is very, very important. And so... This, this situation in America and across the world is coming to the point it's coming to a head pretty much. It's like a, a pimple. You see the pimple when it first comes it's very painful and uh, it starts getting bigger but then it gets to the point where it's a head and you can either but you can burst burst the pimple, and that's gonna take even more pain, or cause more pain when you start squeezing that pimple, and the pus start coming out. So that's how this situation is: is gradually getting to a head, and the head is the children. And so this is a major warning for anybody that's paying attention. It's, it's beginning to get real in the field. Now before I bring out the precepts, I'm going to show this video. And so the video is just giving the, the foundation of, of what's, what we're going to get into. that we're using those protective measures Lucky. like over 100 million Americans are now fully vaccinated and pharmaceutical companies are also working to expand eligibility, hoping to get shots approved for use in children under 16. More information on the efficacy of the Pfizer biotech COVID-19 vaccine in kids ages 5 to 11 could be available as early as this summer, depending on how trials go. The company's co-founder and chief medical officer believes young children could be getting vaccinated by the end of this year. So Dr. Susanna Hill, Hills, rather, is a pediatric airway surgeon and assistant professor of ENT at Columbia University. She joins us now to offer some insight into why getting kids vaccinated is so important. Uh, so Dr. Hills, a new research published in JAMA, JAMA rather, took a look at school children in Israel and it found that kids up to the age of nine are unlikely to spread the coronavirus in school while reopening middle and high schools could be a bit riskier. Explain why that might be, might be and also just why getting a COVID shot approved for kids is so important in the fight against COVID-19. Now, this is so important because you have a sensitive situation that's going on. And let me do this right here. Um, let me do this right here because I want this to be on my screen. Now, let's go into Exodus in the Bible, and we're going to start with Revelation, though. We're going to start with Revelation, and we're going to give a major verse that's going to give you the context of what is going to go down. Now, Revelation chapter 11 Verse 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So, this great city is called Egypt, spiritually Egypt. So, if we're in a great city, we're in a great 
society a great uh, place where people habitate very great very rich like Babylon the Great and that great city that's so rich is even known as spiritually Egypt or spiritual Egypt so let's go back to Exodus and look at Egypt and what happened in Egypt you see and most people that know the Bible know where I'm going now when you go to chapter um, 11 there you go Revelation 11 Exodus 11 uh, let's see here let's start at let's start let's start at verse 5 it says and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is in the mill behind that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of the beasts and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt such as there was none like it nor shall be like it anymore now this is what the most high is telling Moses he's telling Moses it's going to be it's going to go down in Egypt you see it's going to go down in Egypt because the Pharaoh ain't trying to hear what I got to say. Verse 9, he let you hear, he said, let me quote it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not listen unto me, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. See, Pharaoh was not listening, and the Most High was going to get his attention. So he gave uh Moses the instructions for the Passover but he say in verse 12 of Exodus 12 he say for I was I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite or kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment I am the Lord Yahweh so you get down to, uh, let's see here, verse 23, he says it again, For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the linton on the uh, two-side post, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer or the angel to come into your houses and smite you. So he told the, the the Israelites, the children of Israel, don't you uh, not put the blood on your door because the destroyer is coming to destroy. And if he see the blood on the door, he won't destroy you. So jumping down to verse 29, it says, And it shall come to pass that at midnight the Lord smoke. This is, this is what actually happened. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote or killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive or prisoner that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle verse 30 and Pharaoh rose up in the night he and all his servants and all the Egyptians and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead <sighs> powerful now look at what Pharaoh and the people of, of Egypt said in verse 33 it says, and the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them, meaning the Israelites, 
out of the land in haste, in a hurry. For they said, we be all dead men. Boy, that's powerful. So, that's what we get into. And see, the, this, let's go to Malachi. Malachi, the third chapter. Let's get Malachi, the third chapter. Because people think, thinking the wrong thing already. <clears throat> Malachi, the third chapter, verse 6. He says, For I am the Lord Yahweh. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Most High do not change. You see, he do not change. In Hebrews, it tells you that Yahweh, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ, he um, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change either. And the Most High gave all judgment unto Yahweh, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. And so that's why in Revelation he said this great city, Babylon, uh, is spiritually Egypt. And it's in the same thing that was going to happen or that happened in Egypt it looked like it's going to happen in uh in the um, in here in America because the most high is in control of all these things if anything is going now the most high is involved in the situation it ain't no accidents happening around him and see they they give credit they want to give them credit when it comes to the medicine and when it comes to the science, you see. But then they don't want to give them credit when it comes to other things. So let's get that before I close out. Let's get that in Sam Samuel to set the, the foundation that the Most High is doing everything. There ain't no mistakes happening around here. Cause that's what these people are being taught but let's see what the Bible got to say what does the Bible has to say about what what go who is doing what around him so let's go to Samuel Samuel the first chapter starting at I mean first Samuel Salakia First Samuel, the second chapter, verse 6, he said, The Lord killeth, the Lord killeth, and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bring up. You see, so the Lord is doing the killing. He's causing death. You see, He's causing death around him. It ain't nobody else and no other God around him causing death. Deuteronomy 32, 39 says the same thing. I kill it and make alive. You see? And so, we got that foundation. That's the foundation. The Lord is doing the killing around him. And so, when he's talking about he's going to punish Babylon the great for the, the iniquities say the, the iniquities of sins have reached up to heaven now Egypt was the same way Pharaoh did not want to listen to uh, the most high and he was mistreating God's people what is America doing the same thing so what is the punishment going to be? See, because people people don't know that the government is being controlled by the Most High too. See, they think, uh, you know, everything is happening by coincidence and by chance, and it's not. 
And they, 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 they asking God to bless America, but God controls America. He don't have to bless something he control. He control every inch of America. And so it's getting to the head. And if people haven't repented to the most high and, 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 and if they not begging for his mercy, they in for a rude awakening very soon. And so, I want to get that Hosea, Hosea, before I close out. And I'm going to start with chapter um, 4, verse 1. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, Yahweh, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, spiritual Egypt. Uh, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Jumping down to verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because they have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt not be no priest to me. He go to point. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So the two-thirds Israelites, if you forget the law of your God, and if you don't uh, listen to his prophets, who are his 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 uh, voice on the earth, you see, you he's going to forget your children. Because if you don't listen to them, you're going to sacrifice your children to false gods, just like uh, your forefathers did when they was in the wilderness. And the most I had to punish them. You see, had to let the enemy put them into the hands of the enemy. That's how we got on the slave ship the first time. According to Deuteronomy 28.68, worshiping false gods, sacrificing our children, uh, to false gods, throwing them in the fire, and so if we re if if the Israelites, his people reject the knowledge that the prophets is pushing out, they they he gonna he gonna forget their children too, because they gonna uh once they reject him and the knowledge that he giving them, they gonna let they gonna sacrifice these children, but the children gonna follow whatever they. Uh, say, and the children don't have power to resist it. They don't. They don't even know what's going on. So they're gonna end up sacrificing their own children. That's what these two third Israelites is gonna do. The other nation, you know, they do it. And they don't. You know, that's a part of their lifestyle anyway. But for the nation of Israel, who, who, who has a God. That, that that that's so powerful and that 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 loves them with an everlasting love they don't have to do these things but i'm gonna leave it there all praise to yahweh by shim yahweh shah by shimri kakadash barakatai yahweh barakatai yahweh shah double honor to the elders pushing the truth peace to the elect worldwide our kingdom is at hand shalom